So, I'm a politician, a member of one of the most despised professions on the planet. We're right up there with dentists. We are pretty much universally scorned for、uh, being the propagators of insults and half truths, the recipients of kickbacks, and generally people with a propensity for lying. Excellent. And to think that I chose to be a part of the accompanying workplace, where the only one in Canada where it is accepted that people will yell at me, say. Nasty, hateful, and disparaging comments about me and my family—it's all in a day's work. It definitely thickens the skin. But I wonder what it says about me. Every day, I have my moral compass called into question. I wear a label that means to many, I'm less than human. I can't be trusted. I'm corrupt, and you can call me anything. I have to say that some days, that's kind of hard to handle. We are living in a time of slash and burn politics. We must be outraged to get noticed. Some call politics show business for ugly people. We've all seen it, and we're seeing it more and more. The politics of fear and scarcity, the negative campaigning, the bluster, the grandstanding, the toilet tweets, the lack of due process, the extremes of partisan politics. The nastiness of it all, but does it need to be this way? I think we can all agree that while democracy, it isn't pretty, it is the best system out there. The promise of democracy is that the people will rule. It's the process of appealing to the majority, and I would say that the majority of us still want boring things like peace, order, and good government. We want to live in prosperous, inclusive, and sustainable communities. We want leaders who are committed to building communities that will flourish, where we can learn and love, work and sleep, pray and play, grow and eat, and finally die in dignity. At the most basic level, we want our garbage collected, our potholes filled, our toilets to flush, our taps to run fresh drinking water. We want to be safe and protected, but we also want to live in inspiring communities that are innovative and creative, places that our kids will want to come back to, and that they can come back to. So why, with so much at stake, don't we take politics and democracy more seriously? We sure know that other countries take it seriously. Just. Think about how many lives have been lost in simply the right fighting for the right to vote. Think about Chile, Egypt, or East Timor. Maybe it's because we're good at democracy. Canada is among one of the world's、uh, most successful democracies. Look at any international ranking of democracy, and we appear almost without fail near the top. And yet, how do we take this privilege and right so lightly? In election after election, despite millions of dollars in political party and government advertising, voter turnout has declined for well over a generation. Political party membership is rare to non-existent in most parts of the country, and many who join become disillusioned and cynical. At the municipal level, we only had 34 percent of eligible voters vote in the last election. I've knocked on a lot of doors. Some don't get opened. Some get slammed in my face. But the ones that do get opened, it's very, very seldom that a citizen actually wants to talk about real issues and ideas. It is pretty much always, "Don't you raise my taxes?" We have some big, thorny, complex issues out there, and I know they can seem overwhelming: environmental sustainability, economic prosperity. Poverty rates, climate change, to name just a few. And you know what? There aren't any simple solutions. But we need a radical reset. We need to change the game, because democracy can only work with all of our participation. Because the whole model has flipped. It is no longer a question of, and I'll say it, old white men telling us the way things have to be. What do we have to do? <laughs> 
What do we have to do to ensure that we get great leaders with vision, integrity, and the ability to get things done? How do we ensure that democracy stays strong? How do we get a diversity of voices to the table? How do we take the nastiness out of politics so that people just like you want to step up and make the world a better place? Well, there are three things that we can all do. Vote, participate, and engage. It seems evident, but voting is absolutely essential to democracy. We've all heard it. If you don't vote, you can't complain. But hey, aren't all politicians the same anyway? Does my vote really make any difference? Politicians can't be trusted. They're all in it for the same reason, just to line their own cages. But what if there were verifiable ways to find, truly really find out about the candidates? What if you could easily access post, past voting records, expenses, attendance, platforms? Knowledge is power. But I have to say, us politicians aren't always all that keen on sharing that knowledge. We need to do a better job of framing those big complex problems. It's easy to say, oh, it's complicated, because you know what? It usually is. But perhaps we need to be held to task to engage you, to get you to pay attention and care. I'm an enormous fan of communication with citizens and being as transparent as possible. But often, we don't do a very good job of framing the conversation in a way that allows everyone to make their own informed decisions. So yes, voting is important. It is fundamental to democracy, and it is really your right, your privilege, and your obligation as a citizen. Now, not to get all doomsday on you here, but if only traditional voters vote, and by that I mean people my age, 50, almost 52, and older, well then, that is who people like me will kowtow to. And it doesn't build an inspiring, future-looking, future visionary, sustainable world. We will be risk-averse, and we will spend all of our time looking in rearview mirrors. We all know that we need to change that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Even the status quo today is going backwards. So what is the risk of not changing? What is the risk of not taking on the difficult questions for future generations? What is the risk of not listening to those kids from Florida and the brilliant kids that I hear from all the time on my Mayor's Youth Advisory Committee, and some of them are here tonight, thank you. They have amazing ideas, and they see the world in a whole new way. What is the danger of complacency? Well, I don't think we have to look much further than Nazi Germany to have that answer. It's huge, so vote. So we've all seen it, crazy, unbelievable headlines, toilet tweets, social media updates, as they say, if it bleeds, it leads. We are living in a time when only the sensational headlines attract our attention. In this million channel universe and our 40 second filter, not to mention our non-existent attention spans, it is hard to get the truth out there because it is complicated. And boy, is it easy to go to a raging rant immediately. Kind, it's fun, and it's kind of like our morbid curiosity at a car accident. We just can't stop watching. Some part of us can't do that. Angry discourse is the rule of the day, and we've all become so morally righteous. But. It is often very irresponsible for us to use our own personal platforms to propagate untruths. Being angry doesn't make us more right. So the next time you are driven to a long, raging rant, think about it. Could there be more to this story? Could there be another side? Before you lay into a corrupt politician for her idiotic and asinine decision, why not take a few minutes to do a bit of research, reflect, or hey, give her a call or text and ask her what is happening. The days of the perfect heroes, they're over. We need a culture of respect and civility. And let's not forget just a little bit of empathy. 
The ability to see value in two diametrically opposed ideas is critical to creating a thriving and successful democracy. But the combination of partisan politics and social media is absolutely toxic and leaving little room for contemplation. We all need to see compromise and collaboration as strengths instead of weaknesses. We need to encourage collaboration over conflict and we need to participate. And finally, get involved. I really mean this. We all know that better decisions are made when there is a diversity of voices around the table. No one has all the answers, and I wouldn't trust anyone who said they did. The strength that comes from human collaboration is the central truth behind civilization's success. There is no one government that can solve all of the problems, that has all of the answers. It is only by working together, being implicated, getting involved, that we will be able to change the game. Those kids in Florida, they give me so much hope because they are changing the game. So speak up, get involved. There, if there is something that is happening and you don't like it, do something about it, get involved, stand up. You don't have to have all the answers, but even if you have some partial solutions, that's great. But I have to say, participation is more than just clicking the like button, like button or a cutting and pasting or, or signing an online petition. That's slacktivism. Participation is about getting out and getting informed. It's about stepping up with ideas and solutions. It's about truly being committed to change. So I think we all want to live in sustainable, resilient, safe, just, efficient and effective communities. Democracy ain't pretty, but it is the best system out there. But in order for it to work, we all need to vote. We need to participate. We need to step up and get engaged. Yep, there are some really big, complex, thorny issues out there with no simple solutions. But by working together, putting people into power like you, who want to get stuff done, who want to wait, make the world a better place for all for the majority, by not contributing to the untruths and the nastiness of it all, and by stepping up to help find solutions, that's a way that we can all change the game. Thank you very much.